Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment, I want to discuss with you multi-drug resistant bacteria, tinder, and the spread of STDs that are really going to, I think, be a problem in the years to come. Just an FYI, this is not going to be a happy, fluffy video, and I'm going to be real with people. If you can't handle that, then you should probably turn it off right now. People have this need, this is what I've noticed, okay? People have this need for truth, like to be confronted with a problem, and then they want an immediate solution. What I'm going to tell you today is, is not fear-mongering, this is solid truth, but what I'm here to tell you is that nobody's got an answer for what I'm about to explain to you. There are two things right now that are on my, on my mind and on my heart that I want to share with you. The first is the exponential increase, not linear, exponential increase in multi-drug resistant bacteria. And then number two, the increase in the rate and number of sexual partners courtesy of these apps, you know, like on your phone, like name whatever it is of choice. Like, hi, there's a hot person, hook up with them and five of their friends. Like this stuff, I think the two of them, the confluence of those factors is going to be a problem. And let me explain to you what's going on. So this past week, there was a news article that came out about a woman who and God bless her family, who had perished because she had contracted this bacteria that was resistant to everything that we have, to every antibiotic, and I don't care what it is. Like, forget amoxicillin, forget the little Cipro, like, none of that stuff. Nothing worked on this bacteria, and she died as a result of the complications of the infection, okay? This is one person. However, she's not, she's not the first. There have been multiple people in the past few years who have contracted these different bacteria that we have no answer for from, uh, from a pharmaceutical standpoint. We have no pill that can confront this. We haven't been in this situation since I would say probably the late 1800s, early 1900s, okay? This is not a good place to be in. And this is not gonna go away. The problem with the, the rate of growth of these nasty bacteria that are resistant to everything is, gosh, it's multifaceted. The, the first issue is that we as, as a people, when I say we, I'm talking like the collective we, scientists and, and companies that create these drugs, these antibiotics, they cannot create them fast enough, let alone get funding, but they can't create them fast enough, right, to outsprint the rate of, of adaptation at this point with these bacteria. That's part one. Part two, we have more people now for many different reasons, who will go in, seek care, treatment, etc., to, to a hospital, then they will be released and going back into the community. That's good. We want our patients to be ambulatory and then walk back out, you know, and, and go home and happily ever after, right? The issue is that every time that a person is going into the hospital, they are be con being confronted with, despite our best efforts as healthcare providers, they're being confronted with a zoo of different malevolent bacteria. Okay, lots of bacteria that are resistant to lots of different drugs. It used to be that, for instance, MRSA, which is what nurses joke about, like, have you been, have you been colonized yet? Everybody in nursing school was like, okay, did you go into the MRSA, MRSA patient's room yet? Yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure I've got it. Like, we joked about for so long being colonized with these different bacteria, but now they're making their way into the community, okay? They used to be what's called nosocomial infections, which is an infection that starts in the hospital and usually, like up until a certain point, it stayed into that into, in the hospital, but now it's making its way into the community where we're seeing community-acquired MRSA. If it will be the case with MRSA, it's definitely going to be the case with a lot of these very, very resistant malevolent bacteria, okay? That's part one. These bacteria are spreading. Okay, and they're growing at a rate faster than what we can develop stuff to kill them with. That's the simple version. The other thing that I want to talk about with you is the rise in STD, STI infections, sexually transmitted infections, and the increase of these infections being transmitted as a result of technology. <laughs> That'd be a great PhD study, by the way, for those of you who are in PhD school for, for nursing or whatever. Because of the rise in these different dating apps where you can essentially look up somebody, okay, they look hot, we have a meetup at seven o'clock. There's another person, okay, they look hot. Like, I've never done this, okay? I'm just, I'm just being an outside commentator as to what's going on with the culture. Thanks to these different dating apps, people can meet up and there's more opportunity than ever to spread bacteria and body fluids back and forth, back and forth. One of the things that I guess a lot of people don't understand is that the front of multi-drug resistant bacteria, that one of the fronts that's growing the fastest is the sexually transmitted disease bacteria, like chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis even. Yes, syphilis is making a comeback. 
and not just like your your barn barnyard variety syphilis i'm talking multi-drug resistant syphilis and there are different communities that are experiencing an uptick in this but the community that is most prevalent at least from what i've seen and you can check this yourself is the men who have sex with men community um, there are different diseases that spread um, in all across the the sexual uh, communities i guess if you want to put it that way but um, even common commenters about the the gay community have noticed that there is a problem with the flippancy with which these diseases, the bacterial borne diseases, are viewed. It has been up until this point, and that's not relegated, by the way, just to the MSM community. We're talking the entire sphere of, of the sexual humanity, of the sexual human. People have gotten very, very used to, okay, go hook up with whoever, you know, if, as long as it's not AIDS, it's good to go, right? We can just take a pill and it'll be cured. It's not going to be that way for much longer. It's not. And we've set ourselves up really, I think, with the change in morality. We've really set ourselves up. Um, to get shot in the foot as far as this goes. I am very concerned about it. At this point, people are like, oh, well, essential oils and this and the other. Listen, like you can do certain things with essential oils, but um, the problem, I think at this point, is that we are going to be facing down bacteria that are more vicious, more virulent, more nasty than they ever have been because they've adapted to all of our best tricks. And actually, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the movie The Incredibles, which for those of you who have you know, small children or love small children or just love animated films, will probably identify with. In The Incredibles, there's the evil villain, you know, and he had created this monster machine that had adapted based on all the supers, based on all the superheroes that it had killed. It had learned the best tricks from all the superheroes and then you know, it was going to you know, take down you know, the world or whatever, and Mr. Incredible has to stop it. But that's really what we have created. We have created this with our, our usage of antibiotics, especially the unnecessary usage of antibiotics. And I think we're going to be facing a day of reckoning. I don't know when that's going to be, but I'm not the only one saying this. I think the confluence of factors of the, the bacteria becoming more resistant in general, especially when it comes to sexually transmitted diseases, the rate of partners and the flippancy with which people view sexual encounters now, um, that's going to be a problem. But also the rate of individuals being admitted to hospital, contracting something and then going back out into the community and they may be completely asymptomatic. They may not show you anything like healthcare providers will be looking at them and we may not know that they've acquired something. They go back out in the community and they spread it. Okay. Um, these are going to be significant issues that we're, we're going to be facing and I don't have an answer for you. I wish I could say, oh gosh, you know, like this is what you do. Listen, like anybody who, who's going to give you an answer right now is being disingenuous because this is something that we have not faced in a very, very, very long time. Um, and it's probably going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But I just wanted to put this out there for you guys. Uh, it is something that I am concerned about. There's a lot of things, of course, I'm concerned about, but this one has just been weighing on me a little bit. And I wanted to make everyone aware of it. So I guess some practical things that you can do <laughs> as best as possible, don't go to a hospital if you don't need to. It isn't it amazing, and this is just a little bit of a, a stump speech for me. It amazes me, it amazes me how much money people will spend on building up their stashes and their piles of ammo, they're not going to spend the five hundred dollars, whatever, to go train. Forget that. Oh, no, that's too much. But they'll spend thousands of dollars, you know, getting stockpiles of ammo, and they'll spend all this money on food, and then you know they look at a class or you know getting medical training as, <laughs> yeah, whatever, it's too expensive. Okay, so going to the hospital, a two to three, four thousand dollar bill, that's going to be more cost effective. Yeah, okay, you know, um, folks, if you could decrease the likelihood of going to the hospital um, and increase your ability to care for yourself and your family members at home, that's going to pay dividends, okay? So that's part one, getting medical training. Part two, just practicing good hygiene and eating well. You've got to eat well and you've got to pay attention to your nutrition, especially your gut bugs, right? Your flora, your gut flora, it's where a lot of your immunity is situated in the body. Um, but those are the things that I would really encourage you to do. It's going to be interesting. We're at a, we're at a new point in history to see uh, what's going to happen next, but that's what I have for you guys this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. People are like, oh my gosh, it's going to leave us that way. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am, friends. I am. 
If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me, Patriot Harris, and you can like me on Facebook too and follow me on Twitter as well. Also, if you're interested in getting some training, come on out uh, and visit me at one of my classes. I'm going to be actually a lot of different places this year. Spokane, Washington, Richmond, Virginia, Reno, Nevada, Exeter, New Hampshire, Knoxville, Tennessee, Valor Ridge, of course, going to be a lot of places. So come and train with me. If you haven't made that a priority, I encourage you to for sure. The election uh, results and the inauguration are going to be interesting, I think. Um, but folks, the, the left has not ceased in their host hostilities. They are just regrouping, okay? And they have a lot of dastardly tricks, I'm sure, up their sleeves. I have nothing but contempt for them. I wish they would just like be quiet and go away and stop trying to ruin the country, but they're not gonna do that because they are, are gluttons for, for punishment and for death and destruction when it comes right down to it. So uh, it'll be an interesting next few weeks for sure. I think it'll be an interesting next few years with all of these things considered. But uh, Lord willing, we will adapt, improvise, overcome, endure, and thrive in all of this. I hope it was helpful for you all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all later. Bye.